canary in a Covid world. How propaganda and censorship changed our, my world. A collection of essays from 34 contemporary thought leaders. The contributors to this collection of essays are courageous people. They are community leaders. They are novelists, journalists, lawyers, judges, scientists, doctors, academics, politicians, researchers, vaccine injured and data experts. Some shouted from the rooftops from the very beginning of the pandemic. Others found their voices as the contradictions in public and health policy became undeniable. To some, the story of COVID goes like this. A virus of zoonotic origin jumped species and was spread in a wet market in Wuhan. To others, the story starts with a lab in Wuhan, with gain-of-function research conducted either to develop bioweapons or vaccines or to help understand theoretical pandemics. One of these stories is told by the mainstream media, and the other has largely been censored. Being a lifetime vaccine taker with no issues, the call to roll up my sleeve to be part of the solution was never something I had questioned. My days of working with my preschool class, taking my small children on little nature hikes, are now replaced with progressive neuropathy, severe food intolerances, limb weakness, and more than 20 other symptoms. My life now revolves entirely around my physical condition, which is best described by my fellow injured as worse than death. No one needs to die from COVID. Over three years ago, in March 2020, I began administering early treatments for patients with COVID. Along with my colleague Brian Tyson, in the first year and a half of the pandemic, we successfully treated well over 7,000 patients, and today over 20,000 patients. From my experience, let me state it boldly, no one needs to die from COVID. No one should die from COVID. COVID is a treatable disease. If we treat COVID early, no one dies. Now, the importance of what I am about to reveal is inestimable in its impact on depriving the entire world of access and use of a life-saving drug to treat COVID. Andrew Owen was also given the responsibility to prepare the evidence base upon which the World Health Organization would make their recommendation to not use ivermectin outside of a clinical trial on March the 31st, 2021. A professor swimming in financial conflicts of interests with pharmaceutical companies that had products directly competing with ivermectin in the now global COVID marketplace was put in charge of assessing the ivermectin evidence for the most powerful healthcare organization in the world. What do the inventor of mRNA technology, the lead author of the most downloaded paper on COVID-19 in the American Journal of Medicine, a former editor of the American Journal of Epidemiology, renowned epidemiologists at Harvard, Stanford and Oxford, and France's leading microbiologist, have in common? They have all been censored by a repressive media network that most people have never heard of. This network has monstrously conceived and conveyed a monopoly of legitimate information. I believe fraud has occurred at Pfizer. What tipped me off to the fraud was primarily the FDA's decision to hide the data for 75 years. In my world, when I see that, I don't need the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times to tell me fraud has occurred. Throughout my whole career, I've seen fraud over and over again. I make bets with capital, and my bet was that's fraud. The FDA is in on the cover-up. These are my observations, and this is my analysis. There have been two waves of injury to the world. The first has been the SARS-CoV-2 infection, which preyed upon the frail and the elderly. And then the second wave of injury now has been the COVID-19 vaccines. As far as I can see, nobody wants to discuss anything anymore. Certainly while the COVID pandemic and subsequent vaccination campaign was in full swing, nobody wanted to discuss numbers at all. Not your mother, father, brother or neighbour, and most certainly not the people who should be looking at numbers. The thing about good science is that it should be repeatable. If I get a result, then some other scientists should be able to get the same result, right? What I'm hoping to do is to try to show people that the information that they are not getting is not the whole truth and nothing but the truth, because it is being censored, because they are being subjected to a propaganda campaign that prevents them from seeing the bigger picture. It's hard to rank the atrocities inflicted on the Canadian people by the CBC in the last three years, 
but disparaging a proven cure for COVID-19 has to be near the top. As time crawled by, it became evident to anyone who understands how news is written that the CBC had embarked on the biggest pharmaceutical marketing campaign in the history of our country, COVID-19 vaccine promotion. It was a double-speak, backward-think con job that made no sense. For societies to progress in a cohesive manner, people need access to the truth and to be able to trust each other. What are the barriers that are inhibiting our ability to access the truth and therefore leading to more divisions in society today? I think the current situation we've been in the last few years with the pandemic has probably taught us quite a lot about how important truth is. So I'm going to start by addressing the issue of psychological barriers, because I believe that science alone isn't enough. Opposition from powerful vested interests need to be overcome. The first psychological barrier I want to share with you is one of willful blindness. This is when human beings, we're all capable of this, turn a blind eye to the truth in order to feel safe, reduce anxiety, avoid conflict, to protect prestige, egos and reputations. Another barrier to us getting the truth is one of fear. If we are gripped by fear, many of us, most of us to some degree, were gripped by varying levels of fear with the COVID pandemic. That inhibits our ability to engage in critical thinking. To listen to the remainder of this essay and the 33 other essays, please visit Audible, Apple Books or Amazon to receive your copy in print, ebook or audio. Thank you.